What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and today I'm back to bring you some more 40 facts. Somewhat. This isn't about Warhammer 40k, surprisingly. A few days ago, I asked you guys if you were okay with us diving into a new avenue, and that being Dungeons and & Dragons. And for the most part, you guys said, yeah, sure, that'd be pretty cool. So, this video is exactly that. I'm going to be talking about my own personal character that I've created for my very first game of D&D. So this character is called Kyria, and she is a tiefling ranger. Uh, basically what that means is that she's like a half-human, half-devil, and she's a ranger, so like, she's good with like bows and hunting and stuff. So. Um, for you guys who have played, I'm gonna, you know, showcase the story, the lore for her background, and let me know if it kind of fits, or what should I change, or should I improve? Because I mean, the whole part of D&D is to progress your character, but there's gotta be some backstory to it. That way, you can tell your dungeon master, and they can kind of incorporate that into the quest that's going on, to the whole world-building aspect. So, without further ado, here is the lore on Kyria. The Tiefling Ranger. Amongst the edge of the woods in a small cabin, a newborn's cry radiates out. And much to the dismay of the new parents, their daughter appeared rather different. Tufts of silver white hair sprouted from her head, as flesh pink cheeks cooed at the strange world. The center of attention, however, was her tail. And with this, her father knew instantly that these features were brought about by an ancestral curse. Long ago, the father's ancestors strived to summon a powerful demon from the Nine Hells during a war, and such help required a price that was never paid. As punishment, the demon placed a hellish curse upon the family. The enraged demon murdered the men and laid with their widows, cursing every six generation. For these newborns would then possess demonic characteristics. This was known as the Infernal Heritage. For years, Kyria had to be hidden from the other villagers for fear of humans and their ignorance towards the tieflings. Unfortunately, their fears would soon be realized. For one cold night, Kyria and her father came across an injured man while they were out hunting in the woods. This turned out to be a trap, as the injured man's companion sought out to ambush the pair, as the father tended to his wounds. Kyria, using her dark vision, fired a warning arrow towards one of the men. The thieves then brandished their knives, as one bandit followed his attack towards Kyria until her father valiantly pushed her out of the way, taking the knife to the gut in the process. This sequence of events caused Kyria to go into a blinding rage, firing a volley of arrows into the body of a nearby bandit. She then pounced on top of his almost lifeless body, continuing her deadly assault as she ravaged on. This infernal sight caused fear into the hearts of the other thieves, as their growing torches revealed Kyria's demonic nature. Her father quickly tore her away from the decaying body, fleeing with his daughter towards their cabin. Covered in blood, Kyria's mother rushed to their side as they returned to the cabin. The father relayed the events and urged them that they had to leave at once, knowing that soon the townsfolk would be at their door with pitchforks and torches. Kyria could feel the emotions within her father's speech, and instantly she knew that she was to blame. She absolutely hated her features, and above all, she hated herself. Her mother dressed Kyria's wounds as well as her father's. However, they knew that this was a mortal wound, and that there would be no help to give her father. The family, however, continued to pack but they were soon greeted with the murderous chants outside of their cabin. Kill the demon, burn the devil child. Kyria quickly sprung into action, grabbing her bow and arrows, while the anger fueled inside of her. However, these thoughts of anger were silenced by the tender touch of her father, placing a calming hand upon her head. 
so quick to anger, my little hothead. His warm smile burned into her memory as her anger dissipated. Her father gave himself up to confront the mob, giving them time for Kyria and her mother to escape. A hooded man then stepped into view, smirking in all of his grandiose nature, as he persuaded the townsfolk into their bloodlust. The cabin was then soon engulfed in flames, brightly burning into the night sky, as Kyria and her mother could only watch in horror. The hooded man then unsheathed his black midnight blade and plunged it deep into the heart of Kyria's father. Her mother let out a screech and rushed to her husband. As the mob turned their attention towards the wife, they began to pierce her skin with the cold metal of their pitchforks. Kyria hid in dismay as her parents laid in a pool of their own blood, whisking away as their happy home turned to ash. As tears streamed down Kyria's golden eyes, she vowed to kill the hooded man and his gang, as well to also punish the townsfolk for their insidious deeds. Years pass, and now Kyria is a young adult of seventeen. She has been training, honing her tracking and hunting abilities with anger as her fuel. Donning her bow and arrow and a pair of short swords, she now is ready to begin her quest for vengeance. And with that being said, we've come to the end of yet another lore video. So all in all, what did you guys think about this lore for my female tiefling, Kyria? Again, if you guys have been playing Dungeons and Dragons, I want to know if this kind of fits with the theme, the overall encompassing world building aspect, because with the events that transpired, it gives her something to fight for. Um, she now has a, a group that she has now vowed to kill, and she's, she's going to be honing her abilities. So with this being said, she could maybe meet up with some, you know, travelers and kind of use them towards figuring out where the hooded man and his bandits have gone to, or how she can then punish the townsfolk, whether it be through her infernal heritage as like using her demonic abilities, or maybe she's going to stick to the ways of the hunter. It, it can go either way, but yeah, that's what I've got. The images you see here, I didn't want to pick too much, um, but they're as close as what I could find online for what I envisioned my tiefling to look like. Um, so hopefully I can get this commissioned to get the image in my head out to you guys. But um, yeah, I mean, these images are pretty close. If you do want to see the artist, I'll put the links to their um, pages down in the description below. But yeah, that's what I've got for today. Again, guys, we're not going to bombard you with D&D stuff. Um, this is going to be mostly 40k, but for now, let me know what you guys think. And as always, I'm the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll see you guys next time.